lesson 104, we're going to be designing notepads. The specific assignment we will complete is Form 104-9, as you see the checklist over here on the right. You will follow the instructions on page 429 in your textbook for that. If we use the option to print four pages per sheet, the document that we create will look like this when printed. When you use that option, on an 8.5 by 11 inch paper, you can cut and collate the printed pages into notepads. We will focus on the illustration in your textbook of one page that will give us a better view of the design elements as we're working. To prepare for using that print option, it's important that you look at 104E in your textbook and in the Word manual to learn and understand about print options. But when you're ready to work, open Form 1049, the Notepad Form page. There is a note over here on the left to ensure accurate scoring of keystroking in Step 5 when you type the information in the text box type a note from, press enter one time, and then type Sheila McDaniel. Okay, start work. The first step is to insert a picture of an appointment book or picture related to a day planner. So we go to our insert ribbon, click clip art, and perform a search. This is the illustration used in the book, and I'm going to choose this, but you are welcome to choose something else that you see in your search. When inserted, it is very large, so we need to resize it so that it doesn't take up more than probably a third of the page here at the top. Now, you do want to move this up on the page beyond the margins, but you still want to leave about a half inch at the top and later the bottom of the page to allow for printers that cannot print beyond the half inch mark. In order to move this freely on the page, we need to set the text wrap style. We're going to right click, move down to wrap text and choose in front of text. Then you'll find that you can move it on the page. So move it up to about this location and we're ready to move on to the next step of creating a text box. To do this we move to insert text box and choose the option draw text box. I'm going to draw mine next to the graphic and over to the right margin approximately. It should be big enough to hold the words a note from Sheila McDaniel and we're going to press enter after from remember. Our first step is going to be to remove the border from around the text box so we right click, click to format the shape, choose line color and no line, close now we're ready to set our formatting in the text box. So click inside so you see your insertion point blinking. We're going to change to Calibri 36 point bold and center. Move to the home tab. We're already on Calibri but we're going to set size 36 bold center. Now we type a note from press enter one time and type Sheila. Be sure to check the spelling there it all fits very nicely and we're finished with this step. Now we're going to create a text box at the bottom of the page about the same size as illustrated in your text to hold the information computer solutions made simple the address and phone number. So move back to the insert ribbon choose text box and draw text box. Now you can move this later but I'm going to draw mine just so that it ends a half inch above the page edge. I'm going to remove the border again. So this is a refresher on those steps we just learned. Right click, format shape. On the line color, choose no line and close. Now put your insertion point inside and within the text box, we're going to change to Calibri 20 point bold italic. We're also going to set center, although the textbook doesn't seem to say that yet. We type computer solutions 
made simple. Press Enter and change to Calibri 14 point bold. And notice it does not say italic. We're going to remove that and type the address as shown. Press Enter and type the phone number. Be sure that you do your own proofreading as you would have to do in any office. My text box is too big, so I'm going to decrease the size here to no more than I need to include that information. Now another thing I'm going to do is show you how to position this on the page so that we know it is centered horizontally. I can do it by eye, but that is not entirely accurate enough. So select the text box so that you have this double cross cursor on the edge. Right click and click Format Shape. With the text box selected, move to the Drawing Tools Format tab. In the Arrangement group, check Position, click it, and move to More Layout Options. Here we're going to check our horizontal alignment. Move to the first option, choose Center, and relative to, you can choose margin, page, or column in this case. It doesn't really matter because they are all basically the same. We want it centered in relation to the margin is fine. Okay, it, you notice it did shift a little bit to the left, so our, I should say my, centering by eye was not bad, but it was not perfect. Okay, we are ready for step 11, where we want to go back to the Home tab and display the formatting marks. And we want to be sure that all objects are anchored to the first blank line at the top of the page. It looks as if our bottom text box is already anchored to the first line at the top of the page. Our clip art is also anchored over here to the first line on the page. And this text box is also already anchored to that first line on the page. Another thing to note about this type of form that you're creating is you're inserting clip art, you're inserting two text boxes. There is no need to type directly on the page outside of those objects. So there should be no format marks outside of them. Now one is hiding here under our graphic. If I move it a little bit you can see the paragraph mark here. That is the only one that should really be on this page outside of the text boxes. So I'm going to move the graphic back over to hide it. And we're ready for the next step. We're going to change to a whole page view. We are going to be sure that we've clicked outside of any objects and select and copy the entire document. One way to do that is to press Control A. You can also click each one while you're holding Shift, but this is the, the best way. Control A selects everything and you're going to copy. You can use the Control C command. Now this is the tricky part because it wants us to move to the end of the document and insert manual page breaks. But our only line in the document is here at the top of the page. so it is tricky to move to the end. However, so if you see the insertion point blinking at the top of the page, it's under the graphic in this case, you insert manual page breaks by pressing Control Enter. So I'm going to do that three times. Now you can see that I have three page breaks and my page is actually moved to the bottom. That's okay. It doesn't matter because we are going to insert the very same thing on these other pages. Paste the copied document into each of the three newly created pages and click just before the page break formatting code and paste. Now the instructions say to start on the fourth page, but as you'll see on my copy we want to start on the first page see where my insertion point is blinking just before the page break. Now I press Control-V or Paste. 
I move to the next page. Before the page break code, press Ctrl V or paste. And finally, before the last page break code, Control-V. OK, now we can turn the page formatting code off. Now, I am not sure that I think my placement or position of these elements is the absolute best, but it's good. You'll see that all pages are exactly the same, and we are ready to apply our print option to print four pages on one for a notepad. So move to the File menu the print options. We set the four page option on the bottom here of the settings and where it says one page per sheet we need to change that to four pages per sheet. Now if your print preview is not showing like this it is because you need to decrease the zoom to probably 30 percent in order to see four pages on your print preview. Let me show you what you might be likely to see is anything like this but if you move your zoom down to 30 you will see four on one page together. Now if you have made this setting you do not actually have to print but at this point you should save your document so that that print setting is saved with it and will be there so that I can check it when I grade your document. Okay, I'm going to close this and see what happens when I submit it to GDP for scoring. So you will be prepared for this eventuality. It actually did score the document and shows that I have one error but simply it wants me to press enter after this last text box on page 4. Now notice when it's grading it's put the information for the bottom of the page text box on the top. You don't have to worry about that as long as your document looks correct. And because it expected the blank pages to be inserted after the first one that's probably why this error showed up. Do not worry about correcting this if you come up with the same error. That will not be counted against you. Okay, if you have gotten this far, you have created your notepad successfully and ready to move on.